Hey, what's going on? What's going on, nobody? <laughs> nobody watching. Okay, well, I'll give it a minute and see if uh, some people pop in here. I'm in the shop, live, Facebook Live, doing a uh, little video to share some current work with y'all. This is a um, slotted guard clip point hunter, uh, an 80 CRV2 with a brute to forge finish. And unfortunately, you uh, aren't going to be able to see the blade because the blade is wrapped uh, to protect uh, the innocent. Now, it's to protect the, the finish from getting uh, jacked up and anything we're doing here. See if I can improve the lighting in here. It's probably getting washed out on my pale ass skin, but uh, <laughs> hopefully that won't affect uh, showing you what we're doing here. Uh, I've got some tongue oil here, and uh, I've got it in my my custom Dark Angel Cutlery uh, ball jar here that my wife got me. And um, this handle has been sanded today painstakingly. I uh, took some really beautiful uh, blue dyed curly maple. And uh, we pinned this up with a uh, Dark Angel Cutlery custom mosaic. And we also have another mosaic up at the top here. And uh, we have a nice little lanyard pin there. And uh, I wish I could get some better light in here so you could really see the, um, the, the figuring in this. So figured maple is gorgeous stuff. It, it uh, has that kind of chatoyne dances in the light. And because our lighting sucks here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. And it might just be because I have a... Uh, crappy camera let me see if I can switch the screen here to the other side okay maybe that's gonna be better so this is uh, like I said figured uh, or I'm sorry curly maple so ooh, look at that there it goes popping it pop it like it's hot that's it so love me some curly maple let me tell you that curly maple's about as curly as a ass hair around a squirrel Took me a minute to come up with that one. But boy, that looks good. So, I like how it's dark. We're up uh, at the guard there. And uh, like I said, this is a slotted guard. You can see it's seamed at the back. And uh, that pin has vanished into that brass. I love the brass. Uh, I've been, I've been kind of had a sweet spot with the copper lately. And uh, just enjoying putting copper on knives, especially finding good handle materials that, uh, that go with it well, but really feeling the brass on this one. So like I said, clip point hunter, uh, this is 80 CRV2 with a brute to forge finish, just over 10 inches long. It's a, if, in my opinion, a great size hunter, right about that sweet spot, you know, for me, 10 inch blade or 10 inch overall for a hunting knife is right about where I like to be. I usually go about four and three quarter with the handle and then put the rest up in that blade, a little bit of space for the guard there. But uh, I think that's quarter-inch brass on the guard, so really nice. Nice piece of brass on there. So uh, very nice hunter, and uh, it'll be available. Hey, there's my wife in here. She's got, a <laughs> she's got a glass of wine. Anyway, okay, so hopefully, Andrew, can you tell me if I'm, if I'm putting this right, if I'm in the shot at all, or the knife is in the mm -hmm. shot? Because I want to I wanna film here, and did I just mess it up when I touched it? Mm -hmm. So Facebook Live is always a little tricky. We're gonna we're gonna dunk this in the in the uh, the tongue oil here and really just kind of give you appreciation for the um, I don't know I was back here before that might be better. Do there. you want to be in it too? Um, it doesn't matter. I just want to show the knife really. Okay. You know, get a, get a uh, well your knife is good in. shot of the knife is more important than anything else. So we're gonna dunk it and we will show you the magic of uh, curly maple in tongue oil. So. I got some paper towels here just to kind of wipe any of the excess oil away. I want to wipe it off the brass guard the best I can. I mean, that'll get buffed off afterwards anyway, so it's not a big deal if we get a little tongue oil on the guard. I don't want to get it up in here because then it'll travel along the tape and the cotton wrap I do under the tape. I've had it happen before where it goes under the tape and just soaks up the knife and then you get a bunch of tongue oil on your blade and it's not the worst thing in the world, but I don't really want tongue oil on my blade. That's not the... Not what we're planning to use. So I even got some, uh, this is not the same company that uh, the blue curly maple had come from, but this is some other curly maple that is uh, stabilized. And uh, I got this stuff off uh, eBay, also a very curly maple. Uh, it has a little, uh, some spalting lines down the down it vertically, which is really nice. But this is natural colored and uh, also some very nice scales. I think these scales uh, ran me uh, about $15 shipped, which was really just phenomenal for some really nice curly maple like that. But plain curly maple, this is, um, 
what is it? Uh, knife scale, uh, knife scales supply.com. These guys are pretty good. I got found them on eBay. So yeah, so we'll try those on the next one. We have another one here that uh, still hasn't had its uh, it blade sanded. The flats on this one go all the way back where the grind, uh, the bevel is ground, not full flat ground on this one. This is full flat ground all the way back, but we also put the brute to forge in it and we didn't want to lose that on the spine, so I kept it. And uh, yeah, nice looking blade as well. That's a, also a um, clip point slotted guard. This one did not have the clip um, sharpened on the backside or a dull sharpened on the backside. This one actually has a uh, semi-sharpened clip on the back, which is really nice. So it's gonna be a great knife. Without further ado, let's, let's dip this sucker. Just put a paper towel down on the table here. I want to move this file too because I don't want any hardened steel near my um, my handle, my brass, or my blade because hardened steel is hard and it will uh, it will scratch your knife. Well, not the blade itself because the blade is good hardened steel too. But I don't want to damage the handle. Boy, I put that tight. All right, let's make some magic happen here. Do the dunk. Now, I might just leave this in here for a little bit, too, just to let it, um, you know, I actually don't think I need to. This is um, stabilized wood, so, and curly maple's hard as hell anyway, so, leaving it uh, in this uh, tongue oil really won't do much of, much of anything, so, let's make it happen. short on oil to go all the way to the top but we can use our paper towel and push it up as well yeah. see what I'm talking about just gorgeous gorgeous depth in that wood man it's crazy Isn't that beautiful Andrea mm -hmm. I like this side too there's a little bit of character down in the front there see how that wood kind of has some really crazy depth to it I mean it's like glass I mean, this is a uh, sanded Hand sanded to a thousand grit, and then um, yeah, just kind of polished on my jeans a little bit, and uh, it's like glass. It's crazy. So I'm pretty sure this is stabilized too. Now you know I don't know if that other curly maple that I bought from Knife Scales Supply was was uh, stabilized. I'm not sure honestly, but maple is uh, hard as it gets. Well, of course there's harder wood, but it's uh, kind of that sweet spot of uh being a hardwood without uh being brittle so let's get that tongue oil right on the top of that handle material and i just give a push with a with a paper towel and and make sure the handles get you know lots of oil on there but i'll tell you the one side is just uh is sweet it's uh, got a lot of character. Like I said, we'll polish it off the guard if it gets a little bit on the guard. I'm just don't want to get it on the blade necessarily. I spent a lot of time trying to hand sand the tang down on this because the uh, the tang was uh, had a couple little nicks in there uh, that really just didn't want to come out. One was a couple deep ones actually that were just really stubborn. So. Going back and forth with the grits. I thought I had it out and I had to go back and do it again. I didn't have it and finally got it out and was very happy with the results. So I can almost see it faintly there and it just agitates me. So it was on the inside of the handle too, which is can be a bugger to get out, man. I'll tell you. It's like messing around with that thing can frustrate the hell out of you. Trying to get the little finer details into your work. But, you know, perfectionist I am. I just can't settle for leaving it behind. I'll probably go back and fuss with it some more even before this is done. But very, uh, very beautiful handles. I'm glad I shared this. And, uh, you know, it's like Curly Maple's uh, a beautiful wood and it's affordable. It's not like, uh, you know, some of these other, um, you know, stabilized and dyed woods you'll pay a fortune for. And uh, you can get some Curly Maple uh, without, you know, an arm and a leg. Um, so it's gorgeous stuff, man. It's crazy. So I'll go in uh, after this uh, tongue oil dries. I'll go and buff it up. Um, you can even use like just a rag, a cheesecloth, or whatever, and make sure there's no little fibers from the uh, 
fibers from the uh, paper towels or anything. I use these Viva paper towels, and I know a few other makers like them too. They're they're absolutely uh, priceless in the shop. So, like I said, I really like right in here. There's this little bit of character in the wood that uh, I don't know. It's not. Uh, it's hard to explain. It's almost like an interruption in the pattern of the grain, and just gorgeous. So I wish I could have got that um, on the other side too. I don't know if it's just because I pitched the handles a little bit more on that side. No, I guess the handles are pretty much the same on both sides. So they're, uh, yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Nice looking wood. So that's what I got for you today. Uh, this knife's going to get a sheath uh, in the next couple days. And um, a little bit of uh, sharpening to the blade is yet to uh, happen. But uh, look for it. We'll make a uh, nice drop sheath on it with a uh, intention strap, and uh, I don't know. I'm kind of. If you want, comment on the uh, video and let me know what you think I should make the uh, the sheath uh, in. What color should I dye it? I was thinking either black or navy blue. I have both colors, so we could do um, we could do navy blue with like a, a yellowish stitching to match the uh, the brass. Or we could do a black with a black stitching or a black with a blue stitching. So maybe black with blue stitching would look good. But having the navy, uh, the navy dye is a nice thing to do. But it can be a bit much on a, uh, on a knife setup to have a blue sheath hanging off your waist. And everybody digs that. But we could do like a blue panel on it too. So maybe some blue trim. Anyway, that's what I got. I'm going to cap this thing off because I'm getting high from tongue oil fumes. And uh, we're done. I'm going to let this thing dry. I will take a piece of copper wire and send it through my lanyard hole and just hang this sucker upside down and let her dry so thanks for tuning in i'm uh i'm dan dark angel cutlery and uh this is my uh adcrv brute to forge clip point slotted guard with brass hardware and curly maple scales thanks for looking take care